bit of a different video this week and this video is about how to improve your photography. Now I'm going to start off straight away by saying that I consider myself a reasonable photographer at best so the information that I'm going to give you is just stuff that I've picked up over the years and it's nothing that you probably won't hear anywhere else but it's just a few things that I've picked up as I say over the years that I would like to relate to you to see if there is anything relatable that you can take from it. I'm going to start with a quote because this quote I feel will lead me through the rest of the video. A jack of all trades is a master of none. Now that has so many negative connotations to it. But once she's read the entire quote, it has so many positive connotations. And that's where this video is going to go with that. Learn as much about photography as you possibly can. And in that, I mean, shoot different genres. Shoot things that perhaps you wouldn't normally shoot. I like my landscapes, I like the isolation being out in the wilderness eh, with the landscapes, I like seeing how nature is, so I enjoy that, I get a lot from that. I'm not a great landscape photographer, but I get peace from that, so that's why I do that. I like my portraiture, but I hardly get a chance to do that now, because uh, I like the studio aspect and the technical side of that, and actually talking with people, which goes against the landscape side, eh, where... I like it out on my own, but you've got to meet that balance somewhere, but that's just from my personal point of view. I'm terrible at reportage. I don't shoot that at all, but yet I'm telling you to shoot as much as you can. Uh, street photography, I am terrible at, but I enjoy doing it. And I can take so much from the street photography in terms of light, shutter speed and everything, and relate that to my other photography. At the same time, from the landscape, I can take, for example, the previous video there, focus stacking. I can take the focus stacking aspect of shooting that landscape and the technical side of that and apply that to, say, product photography. So everything is interconnected within photography. It doesn't have its own unique, you must do this to get this result. You must do this to get this result. There are ways of getting the results but you will pick these up throughout different photographic practices to get you the result that you are seeking with your images. Now, it comes down to a synergy, and that synergy is just what I've said. Everything working in unison to give you the end result. Now, that end result is your end result. It's no one else's, and that's one of the things I would like to say as well. By all means, copy other photographers. You will learn so much from it. But it won't resonate with you as it did that photographer that took that image. They took it because they brought their own unique perspective to it. And that leads me on to my next topic. It's your photography. It's your own unique perspective on the world. Now that doesn't simply mean going click, 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 click. Here's my unique perspective. You need to learn all the techniques. You need to learn how everything works and how everything works together within the camera, creating the synergy to bring you to your own unique perspective. Now it's a, it's a good thing to do. And as you'll notice, the topics that I'm bringing in here at bar one uh, are all relatable. Every single one of them is relatable and it's nothing to do with the ISO, shutter speed, f-stops. It's to do about the practice of it as well. Sure, you need to know all these to get the images that you're after. And that's the kind of main thing. You need to learn how the camera works, how your camera works. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you're using, whether you're using a mobile phone or... A DSLR, SLR, medium format, you need to know how that works to get the best image from your unique perspective.
if we copy other photographers, we're just simply emulating what they've done. That is it. Yes, you will be learning something from it, but it will never be your perspective or your unique perspective. And the one thing about your unique perspective, try saying that fast, maybe is the perspective that the world didn't know it needed. Now, that's a big thing to say, but you never know. Why do photographers stand out? Why is there other photographers stand out and are better at it and wanted and employed because of their images? And it's simply because they've brought a unique perspective and a synergy of their talents and how they look at everything and their techniques to create these images. That's why these photographers are wanted and now there is so many that you could name. Uh, but they've done something that other photographers haven't. Sure, a lot of it can be, if you're looking for it as a business, a lot of it can be being in the right place at the right time. And that is not to be uh, dismissed in any way at all. Don't ever dismiss that. It is the make opportunities for yourself. Make them and make them happen. Be nice because if you're not nice to someone, believe me, word spreads really quickly. Study other photographers. You must study other photographers, different genres. As we said at the beginning of the video, shoot different genres. So study other photographers from different genres. You may like a certain genre. It doesn't mean you're not going to be inspired by photographers from other genres. Read as much as you can. Ingest as much visual information and audible uh, information as you can about other photographers and filmmakers and everything. Take in as much as you can. I like my films, so I take a lot of inspiration from my films and how the composition works within the film as well. So take in as much information as you can. One of my favourite photographers is Alexei, Alexei Titarenko and his images I just find mesmerising. I absolutely love the images. I would love the book, but I can't afford it. It's as plain and simple as that. So I'm left online searching through just to see exactly what kind of images that he takes and reading up the information on it. Again, I'll never be able to do it, but I never want to emulate it. I'll take inspiration from it. Maybe even try it myself. You never know. But take in as much as you can. For me... His photography, most of, in most part, doesn't relate to the landscape photography. But how he looks at things, that does relate. So I took that from that and take inspiration from that. Creativity comes into play as well here when it becomes your unique perspective. Now, I for one recognised this years ago in myself. I need to be creative. I really, really need to be creative if I'm not being creative. And to me, creativity also means learning about the camera itself, learning about lighting, learning about subject matters. And that's creativity, that's stimulating the brain uh, to be hopefully provide you with a unique perspective on your subject matter. So be as creative as you can be to get the results that you want. Don't shoot for other people. That's a big no-no as far as I'm concerned. Uh, don't shoot for other people because then going back to your unique perspective, it's gone. Because you're always shooting to either please other people or in the hope that they like what you shoot. Sometimes people don't know what they like until they actually see it. So shoot for yourself and if you can, I know it's difficult as well at times, but shoot for you can. Sure, if a job comes in and they tell you they want this, yes, do that. But for your own photography, shoot for yourself. If people don't like it, they don't like it. As long as you do, that's the main thing. So to shoot and try and please everyone, it's not going to happen. As you, 
and I would say my biggest suggestion is get that out of your mind totally. Somebody doesn't like your image, fine. It's okay for people not to like your images. And that's that's a big thing. That's when it comes down to criticism as well. Uh, it's okay for that to happen. Because in your heart of hearts, you will know if you like the image or not. And you will know. Yes, we can always do things better. But you will know in your heart of hearts whether that image is good. And if you're shooting all the time just to post on social media or trying to get people to like your photography, it's not going to happen until suddenly something appears that you've done, a spark is created somehow up here and you get that photograph and from then people begin to notice. It can take a, a year, it can take 10 years, it can take 20 years, it can take 30 years. Maybe never happen at all. But the main thing to keep running is shoot for yourself. That brings me really nicely on to trolls. Now, these people, as you know, and everybody knows what a troll is, ignore them. And that's the easiest thing to say without giving them too much time in this video. Ignore them. There's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with somebody in their life wants to bring doom and gloom to other people or berate other people. That's, that's something wrong with them. Let them. Leave it with them. Don't reply. Don't do anything. The effect of that on you as well can be you get 70 or 80 likes on an image that you post online and this is not the importance of taking photographs as likes. I want to stress that but as most people share images online nowadays uh, you get 100 likes and you get one troll. You'll remember that troll. That's the one thing you'll remember. My advice here, I suppose, would be don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Now, I told you I like my quotes and that's another one that I like, but that one resonated with me. So, ignore them as best you can. Don't let them get to you. So you can see from photography that everything is interrelated. And I don't mean ISO, aperture, shutter speed. Uh, I mean everything from every genre. Sure, learn your camera. Learn what it does. Learn what you can do with it. Because you can't always continually blame the tools. Oh, I need a 64 megapixel camera. I need a 100 mega. I love the GFX 100S. It makes my images look brilliant. But I can take the same images on the Z7 II. I can take the same images on the uh, X-T5. There's just something about it. And I am a gearhead. I love my gear. But it doesn't make me a better photographer. And I know that. I recognise that. So that's a good thing to do as well. Recognise that it's not the gear that holds you back in most cases. It is... If anything's holding you back, it's just perseverance from yourself. And that could be down to a multitude of different things. I am not uh, casting aspersions here in any way at all. That could be down to a multitude of different things. You must enjoy what you're doing first. First and foremost, that's it. You must enjoy doing it. Don't compare yourself to other photographers because you're never going to be another photographer. You're going to be you. Again, related from your own unique perspective. That's the photographs you're going to produce. So... You have to look at things that way. Hopefully you see the interconnectivity with everything that I was saying there. And if I wanted to summarise it, it would be summarised, but just keep doing it. Just keep doing it, but think about what you're doing and think about why you're doing it. Think about the things that you don't know about and why don't you know about them? Should you be learning about them? What will they bring to your photography? Now that maybe seem a bit confusing, what I said there. But if you get away and think about that one, it will be relatable. AI technology, two years ago, wasn't even been spoken about. Last year, caused ripples. This year, we now see how positive 
an impact it can have within the editing side of photography. Yes, there are negatives, but I'm not going to get into that negative side of things at all. Uh, a lot of the techniques that I've learned over the years in Photoshop have now become redundant. But I'm happy for that because this now gives me something more to learn. I'm not becoming stagnant. And that's a big thing as well. Don't become stagnant. Become better. Be creative with your images. Shoot different genres. If you hit a slump, go and shoot something else. Just go and do it. You may not like the images that you get, but at least you'll still be taking images. And at least maybe upon reflection, a month, two months down the line, you will see something in that image that you go, ah, that actually, oh, ah, ah, yes. There's something there that I like. So think about all these things. Best way I can say things is that everything is interrelated and it all has a synergy. It needs that synergy to work together. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully I know it was a long chat. If you stayed to the end, I hope you enjoyed your coffee or whatever. Uh, hopefully you found the video thought provoking in some way and if you did please put the comments down below because I do read them I might not have the chance to get back to everyone but I do read them next week's video at the moment I am unsure what it's going to be because of a couple of things that happened last week uh, it might even be about those things I don't know thanks again for watching take care and I'll see you in the next video